I request each and everybody who is listening to me today here to, to, to read the book of Romans, not once, not twice, maybe multiple times. Because in the book of Romans, God speaks about a profound revelation, a deeper insight of spirituality. And if you go through this book, you find that this book can be divided into three segments. From the chapter 1 to 8, from the chapter 1 to 8, it speaks about the revelation of righteousness of God. Romans chapter 1 to 8, if we read. It speaks about the revelation of the righteousness of God. It is a combination of salvation, righteousness, and faith. Then the second portion talks about the vindication of righteousness of God from Romans 9 to 11. It talks about the faithfulness of God, his covenant, and his promises. And the last part talks about the application of the righteousness of God. From Romans 2 to 16. I will repeat once again. If you read the book of Romans. You get to know the deeper insight. Of the righteousness of God. And I would truly want each and every believers in Christ to read the scriptures. Especially written in the book of Romans because it's going to enhance your spiritual man to a different level. So it's very important for you to meditate on the word of God in from the book of Romans and understand what God speaks in the scripture and apply it into your life. And when you apply the scriptures into your life, that's when you get the maximum benefit out of the scripture. So I want you to read this. So for your, for your understanding on the book of Romans, for your just understanding of the book of Romans, I just want to repeat it once again what I told you so that you can remember what I, I, I am preaching to you today. For your understanding, this book of Romans is divided into three different portions. The first portion speaks about the revelation of the righteousness of God. It is a combination of salvation, how God gave us salvation, his righteousness towards us, and faith. And it is written from Romans 1 to, 1 to 8. From chapter 9 to 11, it talks about the vindication of the righteousness of God. It talks about the faithfulness of God, his covenant, and his promises to his children. From chapter 9 to 11. And the last portion talks to you about the application of the righteousness of God. Application of the righteousness of God which we need to do. We need to follow. And it is from Romans 12 to 16. See, the salvation what we have received should be a, a transforming salvation. I would not say a transforming salvation. I would say a transforming Christian life. I would put it in this way. A salvation received should transform a Christian in relationship with what he has in the society, with his neighbors, to God, and to himself. Christianity is more about transformation. We say Christianity is religion. I would not say no. You would say Christianity is a relationship 
Yes, I agree to it. But I would say that Christianity is more of a transformation, a transformation of life. A changed self is not a condition for salvation, but it should be a natural outcome of being saved. I will repeat to you once again. A changed self is not the condition for salvation. Oh, I need to change myself because I have to reach eternity. I need to reach heaven. So let me change myself. You force yourself into it to follow righteousness. You force yourself into holiness because you think God will be angry with you. You think that God will not accept you. You think that God will reject you. You force yourself. You force yourself in transforming to receive a salvation. But I would say that you should not force yourself expecting something to be received from God, but this transformation should be a natural outcome of being saved. It's a natural outcome. Amen. 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 When you apply the word of God into your life, the transformation becomes natural. It's not because somebody is forcing you to do something, you're doing it. It's natural. It comes from within you. And that's what Romans speaks about. It says, a person who has received salvation need to have a transformation within himself. To be in the likeness and the image of Christ. And this transformation in a Christian begins when he applies the word of God. Amen. When there is an application of the word of God, the word of God has got the power to transform you into a different personality. Yourself gets transformed. Your way of thinking gets transformed. It gets renewed. Your lifestyle gets transformed. Your words and action gets transformed. There's a transformation in a Christian. You don't become a Christian because you go to church. Religiously, I'm talking about. You know, people are too religious these days. You know, they go to the church. They want to celebrate all the festivals you know, of Christians to show themselves they are Christian religiously. But spiritually, you don't become a Christian because you go, to the, you go to a church. You don't become a Christian because you celebrate Christian fest, festival. Neither you become a Christian because you have a Christian name like John, Peter, Mary, Martha. No. Spiritually, you become a Christian when there is a transformation within yourself. That's when God looks at you and says, this is my child. This is my son. This is my daughter. You're identified as a Christian by the transformation in you. You're not identified as a Christian because you go to the church spiritually. If there is a lack of transformation in you, then you need to work on it. You need to work on it. Because without transformation, a Christian cannot enter the kingdom of God. So it is essential for a Christian to transform himself, to change his, himself, to change his personality, to change his lifestyle, to change the way of his living, to change his standard of living from natural standard to the spiritual standard. And this change occurs. When there is an effort which has been put by you in meditating on the word of God and applying the word of God. Without the application of the word of God 
into yourself, there's no transformation. That's why it is very important for a Christian to read the scripture, understand the scripture, meditate on the scripture, and make the scripture the way of his life. Because God is looking at a transformation in you. You have the same nature of anger before being saved, and you come with the same nature even after you are a Christian. Ten years now, then there is something that you lack. You used to say lie, and even after salvation, you keep saying lie. There's a change needed now. There's something that you lack. What you lack is the meditation on the scripture. Means your time that you spend on the scripture is very minimal. You need to spend more time in meditating on the scripture. Amen? Are you here with me? Are you here with me? So in the book of Romans, you know, the Paul's, Paul speaks about righteousness, the righteousness of God, and the righteousness of, of, of Christians. How to apply it. How to be transformed. And today what we are going to learn is something related to that. Amen? So I want you to open your Bible to Romans chapter 12, words 1 to 2. Romans 1 to 2. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I know many of you know the scripture by heart. You must have heard many people speak about the scripture. So I was saying, God, God, teach me something different from this. Because, you know, I speak to some experienced Christians who have been going to church for a very long time. So they have been hearing this word for a very long time. So there should be something different what I can give them today. So the Holy Spirit was taking me through certain revelations from the scripture which I would like to present before you today. Okay? Can we read from verse 1? Maybe we have Sunday school today. You didn't go? Ah, somebody take her to Sunday school. That's good. Do every Christian have a Bible? There's a proverb which says, carry the scripture and the scripture will carry you. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Romans chapter 12, words 1 to 2. Here we go. Can we read it together? Okay, before we read, can we have the declaration, please? You're still figuring out where it is? <laughs> okay, it is here. Okay, can we, can we stand up to our feet and, and read this? I stand in God's presence. Yeah. To be ministered in spirit and truth, aligning my spirit, soul, and body to his voice through the word. I believe in the Holy Trinity of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit working in me. I believe in eternal life through salvation and baptism by water and the Spirit. I believe in the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. I believe that I am called to lead a life of holiness and righteousness. I believe I am a son, daughter, of the God through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are standing, I want you to open the scriptures to what's one now. Yeah, can we read it together? Yeah, here we go. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. What's two? And do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Father, talk to your children. Reveal to us the deeper insight of the scripture which can help us grow in understanding and knowledge. Which can make us an effective Christian. Not just by name, 
not just by religious rituals, but by transforming ourselves to be an image of Christ. Thank you for hearing us, because you always do it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated, please. As I said, the book of Romans is written by Paul. And Paul speaks about worship in word one. And in the word two, he speaks about renewing of your mind. In word one, if you observe, Paul speaks about a method through which you have to present yourself before God in worship. Right? In watch 2, Paul speaks about a method through which you have to present yourself in the society. Yeah? Are you there with me? In watch 1, he says there is a method through which you have to present yourself before the tabernacle. Because you are the living sacrifice. You don't come with lamp or goat, but you come as a living sacrifice, presenting yourself before the Holy Father through worship. Through worship. And the worship what we offer in the presence of God is the sacrifice we give him. The sacrifice of praise. How? How? Holy, holy, and acceptable to him. Amen? So he speaks about the way you have to present yourself before God when you come before him. So that he can accept your sacrifice of praise. And the way you have to present before him is holy. Somebody say holy. 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 In the same manner, Paul speaks about presenting yourself in the society. You need to present yourself in the, in the society with the renewal of mind, which results in a transformation of character. With the renewal of mind, which, which results in the transformation of yourself. You need to present yourself in the society with a transformed nature. So when people see you in the society, they see the image of Christ in you. That's what Paul is talking about. And for this transformation, there needs to be a renewal. And where does this renew? Or where should this renewal happen? This renewal should happen in your mind. In your mind. Amen? I want you to read the second word. Just read the second word. Do not be. And do not be confirmed to this word. Okay. Do not be confirmed. Underline that word confirmed. Underline that word confirmed. Do not be confirmed. What do you mean by confirmed? It means be similar. The meaning of confirmed is be similar. Be similar. Be similar. Be in line. Be in line. Be similar. That's the meaning of confirmed. Okay? He says, do not be similar to this world or do not walk in line of this world or do not be an image of this world. Right? Okay? Now, the next word. But be transformed by the but, renewing. But, but, be transformed. Underline the word transformed. What do you mean by transformed? Completely different. Change over. Make over. That's the meaning of transformed. Change over, make over, be completely different. Then, by the renewing of your by mind. By the renewing of your mind. What do you mean by renewing? Adopting a 
new form. Adopting a new form. There are three words which are very important in this, in this sentences. Three words. Number one. Confirmed. confirmed. Number two. Transformed. Transformed. Number three. Renewing. Renewing. What do you mean by confirmed? Don't be similar. similar. What do you mean by transformed? Completely changed. Change. Completely change. What do you mean by renewing? Become new. Become new or adopt a new form. Okay? Now I'm going to read it with its meaning now. Okay? I'm going to read it with its meaning. Now it goes like this. Do not be similar to this world, but be completely different by adopting new form of mind. I made it simple. Okay? Right? Would you repeat with me? Okay. I want you to repeat with me. Right? Okay. Do not be similar to this world. Okay. But be completely different by adopting a new form of mind. Amen. That's the meaning of this word. Amen. The outcome of salvation should be a renewed mind. A Christian can be identified as a Christian by a renewed mind. If you don't have a renewed mind, you would not have a new nature. You would not have a new self. Because everything begins from your mind. Do you agree with me? That's why Paul is saying here, okay, do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. The renewing of mind results in the transformation of yourself. The transformation of yourself to be the replica of Christ. Okay? Hello? The transformation of mind means replica of Christ. When people look at you, they need to look at a replica, replica of Christ. When God said, I'm going to make man in his, my image and likeness, this is what he meant. He will have my replica of nature, of self, of behavior, of character, of response, of thoughts, of words, of deeds. He's not talking about the nose, mouth, eyes, face structure. The body structure of man. He is talking about the spiritual structure of man. Hello? He is talking about the spiritual structure of man. And Jesus came to this world and died on the cross of Calvary to transform you into image and the likeness of God back again. That's the reason you re received salvation. Amen. Man lost his image and likeness in the Garden of Eden when he sinned against God. But Jesus destroyed the sin on the cross of Calvary so that man can be restored back into the image and the likeness of Christ or the image or likeness of God Almighty. Now the Christian is identified as a Christian with this image and likeness. And that's the reason Jesus came down into this world as flesh. So he can manifest the nature. The nature of God. So that we can implement that same nature of Christ into us. And we can reflect the image and the likeness of God. Where? In the family, in the society, in the company you work, among the people you have fellowship with. Are they able to see the image and the likeness of God in you? If it is not, 
then the transformation is not yet completed. And if this transformation has to be completed, there should be a renewal of your mind. Amen? There is nothing. Listen to me. Are you here? Are you able to understand? Am I going too fast or too slow? Am I going too hard? Jesse? No, no. Right? You're okay? Good. You're with good. You have a good combination today. Black, black, black. <laughs> That's nice. I thought most of you would come covered. But you all come uncovered. Huh? You're not afraid of uh, Corona? No? Corona is afraid of you. <laughs> you know, I was uh, going through some live today. You know, some of the churches in Philippines, they don't have the church service today. It's only the live streaming today. Because the government has ordered not to have mass gathering. It's the same in Bangalore also. So there were people in the African service who test me and ask me, Pastor, how about tomorrow? I said, tomorrow we have the service. Bring all corona-infected patients to the church tomorrow. They'll be healing. Because <laughs> they're going to apply the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen? They have not yet found the cure. But we have the cure. Yes or no? Right, Alvin? We have already the cure. What is our cure? The blood of Jesus. What can stand? Which epidemic can stand before the blood of Jesus? Amen? Amen. You're all covered by the blood of Jesus. Say, I am covered by the blood of Jesus. That doesn't mean you should test God. Huh? Don't go before a infected patient and say, now you cough at me. Let me see whether I will have this corona or not. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't do that. <laughs> okay? So don't be afraid of this corona. Don't fear. God is our protector. But safeguard yourself. Right? When you f see somebody coughing, running nose, fever, breathlessness, you know, suggest that person to go to hospital and check you can also pray for that person, right? And keep away from such patients, right? Don't move around too much in public. Alvin, where do you eat your lunch, dinner, and breakfast? PG, yeah. Place your hands on the plate, pray, and then eat. We don't know if the coronavirus is there in the plate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, let's forget about corona. This has become a big uh, topic. Huh? Wherever you go, corona, corona. My wife, I said, hey, yesterday evening I went home and I said to my wife, now it's become more in uh, which place? In the in, uh, U.S. The U.S. government has is, is, uh, is, uh, declared an emergency. And she shouted at me from the kitchen, what is this corona, corona you're talking about? Don't create fear in this house. <laughs> so don't talk about the devil. Talk about Jesus. <laughs> right? So don't be afraid of corona. Let corona be afraid of us. Right? Tell corona we are also corona. <laughs> okay? So you cannot do anything to me. We are a different corona. Right, Emmanuel? Corona. <laughs> We are a different corona. Okay, okay, right. Okay, let's go, let's go, okay? There is nothing more powerful than a changed mind. We are talking about renewing. Yes or no? Right? Renewing. Renewing. So where does it, where does it start, it should start from? Where does it, it should start from? That's what we are talking about. Right? See, people, when they look at you, 
They should say, you're a, hey, hi, are you a Christian? They should not know your name and say whether you're a Christian. They should look at your acts and deeds and say you're a Christian. Your neighbors should identify the family living next door as Christian by the way of living. By the way of living. Amen. I have seen they have names. Joseph, Mary, and they also keep their children's name as Jesus. Right? And in the morning, you see all the vessel sound flying up and down in the house. It's like a tsunami inside the house. Did somebody have this experience? Abba, you're looking very religious. <laughs> Name is not what makes you a Christian. Your lifestyle, the way of living. Okay? Now, there is nothing more powerful than what? A changed mind. Nothing more powerful. See, you can change your color of the hair. You can change your clothing. You can change your residence. You can change your car. You can change your job. You can change your business. You can change your spouse. You can change your church also. Nothing that is changed physically or materially will impact your being or self into a new form except changed mind. If you would like to have a transformation in yourself, if you would like to have a renewed kind of living, if you want to have a renewed nature, renewed self, it all should begin in your mind. In your mind. Your mind is the motherboard of your system. The person who you are and who you will be is the result of your mind. Mm. Mm. The person who you are and who you will be is the result of your mind. Your mind is the one which controls your reflex action, your words, your deeds. It's controlled by your mind. Fear, anxiety, depression, confusion, sorrow, loneliness, negativeness, anger, doubt is all the result of your mind. On the other side, joy, happiness, positiveness, peace, boldness, Forgiveness, courage, love is the result of your mind. The person you are, the personality you possess, the nature you possess, the acts and deeds you do is the outcome of your mind. Of your mind. Now, if you are under the presumption that your mind is controlled by you, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. People think they are controlled by their mind. No. Your mind is not controlled by you, but your mind is controlled. Your mind is controlled by two worlds. One is the material world or the natural world and other one is the spiritual world. The outcome of who you are results on who you are controlled by. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The outcome of your physical or emotional reflexes is the result of who is controlling your mind. Who is controlling your mind? Is it controlled by the material and the natural world? 
or is it controlled by the spiritual world? Who is the custodian of your mind? You need to ask this question for yourself. Who is the custodian of your mind? Whom have you rented the space of your mind to? Who is making a residence in your mind? The person whom you give authority to take place in your mind or rent your mind is the one who controls you. Amen? To the ones, who are, who, to the ones whom you have rented your mind to is the one who controls you. If you have rented your mind to name, frame, lust, desire, passion, or the influence of the world, it is that person who controls your mind. But if you have rented your mind to the scripture, to the word of God, and it is this person who controls your mind. So the result of your anger, unforgiveness, brokenness, fear, failure, sorrow, Ego, pride, attitude is the result of whom you have rented your, your, your mind to. The result of love, joy, forgiveness, oneness, unity. Depends on whom you have rented your mind to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody next to you and ask you, who is the custodian of your mind? Who is the custodian of your mind? Hallelujah. Yeah? You need to check yourself. What comes out of you? Then you know who is the custodian of your mind. Yes? What comes out of you? Is it anger? Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Then who is the custodian of your mind? Is it love, joy, confidence, unity, forgiveness? Then you know who is the custodian of your mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Can I go a little more deeper? Yep. Now, there is something a Christian should understand. You're born with the mind of flesh. When I say mind of flesh, it means you're born with lust, passion, and desires. You're born with a fleshly nature. And your mind is controlled by this fleshly nature. And this mind is influenced by the environment you live in. The natural environment you live in. This influences your mind to have the fleshly nature, the desires, the passion, the pride, the ego, the attitude. It's all inbuilt because of the environment you are living in. You're influenced by this environment. Now God delivers you from this environment to a new environment. And he wants you to adopt into this environment so that there can be a renewal of your mind by the influence of this environment. Mm -hmm. So unless you change your pattern of living in a different environment, you cannot renew your mind. You may have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, you may have been baptized, but still if you live in the old environment, you're still influenced by the lust and the desires of the world, which 
indi- uh, sorry, which directly influences your mind, which results in worldly nature. When you received salvation, it's only your spirit which has been which has been renewed. Your body and the mind remains the same. Now this new spirit is in the old body and the old mind. Your mind is not renewed and your body is not yet renewed. Means I'm talking about a a glorified body. Okay, I'm talking about a new kind of mind. Only your spirit is renewed. Now God saves you, picks you up from a place where you lived in unrighteousness, washes you with his blood and makes you righteous and then puts you in a different environment so that from that environment, your mind can be influenced into doing righteousness. Your mind can be renewed into the nature of God. Now in this environment, there are some spiritual activities what God emphasizes into a newborn in Christ. And when you adopt to the spiritual practices, it is then your mind gets renewed. And what are the spiritual practices? Prayer, word of God, amen, fellowship, worship. You need to get into that environment of spiritual practices by adopting these practices into your lifestyle and when you adopt these practices into your lifestyle these practices will influence your mind to be renewed amen amen the main the main tool what god uses to renew a a a a, a mind of a child of god is the word of god is the scriptures Now, how does it work? When you feed on the scriptures, okay? Right? When you feed on the scriptures, the scriptures have the power to influence your mind and to transform your mind. You come in knowledge of the kingdom of God. And this knowledge, what you inherit through the scriptures, will renew your mind to a different understanding. To a different understanding. And this understanding will influence yourself. That's why the Bible says, my children are deceived because of the lack of knowledge. Knowledge. So you need to impart the scriptural knowledge into your mind every day. Every day. And when you impart the scriptural knowledge into your mind every day, there is a renewal of your mind. There is a transformation of your mind. And this transformation of your mind will get into a deeper understanding. And this deeper understanding will help you to live a life based on the image or the constitution of God. Hallelujah. 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 I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Imagine your husband is a drunkard. Okay? And he comes home drunk, abusing you. Physically, when you see this experience, it's very negative. It's very negative. So a person who has this worldly mind, the person who has this worldly mind, she would react depressed, sorrow, filled with anxiety, Filled with depression, filled with uncertainty. Okay? But a person who has a renewed mind, okay, renewed mind, through the scripture, when she sees her husband coming home drunk, she doesn't 
reflect fear, sorrow, depression, or angry. But she would say, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. My God shall fulfill the desire of my heart. There is nothing impossible with God in prayer. She is not influenced by the physical things which is happening around her, but she is more influenced by the spiritual, spiritual promises what she has inherited through the scripture. Amen? Amen? Now, a person who has got a worldly mind, okay, when there is a financial depression or a financial depre- uh, you know, disturbance, you know, what happens to this person? Immediately fear, anxiety, right? Depression. We don't know what it is going to be like. Tomorrow, we don't know how we are going to fulfill our needs. There's so much of panic, right? To a person who thinks in a worldly mind, but a person who thinks with a spiritual mind, you know how he thinks? He says, my God shall supply all my needs According to the riches and glory in Christ. Hallelujah. He will not allow anything natural to influence his emotion or feelings. His emotion and feelings are controlled by the word of God. He depends on the word of God more than he depends on natural things. Or material things. The way of thinking is different when you have a renewed mind. You're not afraid of what people talk about you. You're not afraid of people who plot against you. You're not afraid of them. Because you know your God is your protector. You know your God is your shield. You know no enemy shall prosper against you. You know no weapons formed against you shall prosper. Because you know you are under the wings of God Almighty, and no power of hell can come near you or steal anything that belongs to you. Hallelujah. 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 That's why it says in the word of God, my son, meditate on the word of God. Hallelujah. Meditate. You know what Proverbs 4, 20 To 22 says, it says, my son, give attention to my word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Incline your ears to my sayings. Pay attention to the word. But what we do? We pay attention to the social media. We pay attention to TV programs. We pay attention to the society. We are more attentive to the things which are happening around us. But we are not more attentive to the word of God. The Bible says, don't be more concerned about what is happening around you. Be more concerned about what God is speaking about you. Amen. Don't pay attention to what the world speaks about you, but pay attention to what God says about you. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Can you read that word? It's so wonderful. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Mm. My son, give attention to my word. My son, I will also include the daughters here. My son, my daughter, pay attention to what? My words. My words. Pay attention to my words. What I have spoken about you. What is my plan for you? What is my promises for you? Pay attention to that, not to what people speak about you, right? Not to what is happening around you, no. 
not to what you're going through materially and physically. Don't pay attention to that. Pay attention to my words. Because I have spoken about you in my word. I have told my plan about you in my word. I have spoken about your future in my word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pay attention to that. Maybe things are going bad. With your physical, you know, instant, you may, you may think that things are going bad. But don't pay attention to it much. But pay attention to what I am saying about it. Things may be going bad concerning your, your, your job. That don't pay attention to it, but pay attention to what I have, I have, I have told about you in my, in, my, in my scriptures. Amen. I have told you that I will make you the head and not the tail. I have told you I will prosper you in everything you do. I have told you no works of the enemy shall prosper against you. Mm -hmm. I've told you, I shall prepare the table before your enemies. Don't pay attention to what people talk about you. Don't pay attention to the circumstance and situation what you're going through. But pay attention to my word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you pay attention. Attention to the word. It is the word of God which influences your mind. You rent the space of your mind to the word of God. Now, even in this situation, you're not afraid. You don't fear. You have the confidence. You have the boldness. Things are going bad. People may come to you and say, oh, what would you do? Things are bad with you. But you're not afraid of their saying. Because you know the saying of the Lord. Amen. You're more confident on the Lord than what you are in the situation and circumstance you face. You, 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 you refuse to believe it. You refuse to believe the situation and circumstance. But you, you, but you believe in the word of God. What God says about you. Because your mind is filled with the scriptures. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You're composed. You're confident. You are at peace. Even when things are going bad, you are at peace. Why? You depend on the word. Your trust is in the word. You have the confidence on the word. And the word is influencing yourself. Because your mind is filled with the word of God. You are given the custodian of your mind to the scripture. And the scripture starts manifesting in your mind. And helps you to remember what God has spoken to you about the situation and circumstance. So you refuse to fear. You refuse to be in depression. You refuse to be angry. You refuse to worry. Because you don't depend on the world's resources, but you depend on the world's resource. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Maybe you're concerned about your children. Things are going bad when you look at them. But what does the word say about them? I and my family shall serve the Lord. I don't fear because I know my God is going to bring a transformation to them. I know my God is going to lead them to salvation. I don't fear. On the other side, children have taken bad steps. They've taken bad decision. To a person in the world, they fear. There's anxiety. They don't know what their future is going to be like. But for a child of God, he doesn't fear. Because he knows God is in control. He knows. It just takes a second for God to transform. He just keeps that in prayer and says, God, you need to handle this. I don't need to worry about it anymore. Because I know God has promised me that I and my family shall serve the Lord. And if I am serving the Lord, my family also will serve the Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. When you give the scriptures, the custodian of your mind, your lifestyle is different. Your lifestyle is different. You will be at peace always. You will not fear what the world fears. You will not have uncertainty about your future because you know your future is in the hands of God. And you know in the right time, the blessings of God will come in search of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not afraid of the medical reports, what the reports say. But you trust in the word of God, which says, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Hallelujah. So even in sickness and disease, I don't allow my emotion to take control of me. I'm not worried. I'm not depressed. I'm not anxious. But I have faith and confidence that I will be healed. Why? The word of God is in my mind. It is the word which is influencing my emotions. Hallelujah. That's why I request the church to, to meditate on the scriptures every day. Every day. You need to read the scriptures every day. Somebody may be worried about the job. What is going to happen to me? Hey, don't worry. God is in control. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He knows how to open the doors. And he knows when to open the doors. I refuse to fear. I refuse to worry. I refuse to be depressed. It doesn't matter if I am unemployed for a few months. I know I will make it up later. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, my plans for you are to prosper you, but not to destroy you. Hallelujah. Who is controlling your mind? Who is the custodian of your mind? What does it say in Proverbs? What does it say? Read. Hmm? Read loudly. My son, give huh? attention to my words. Incline your ears to my savings. Pay attention. Because I'm talking to you something which is very important. You need to pay attention to it. Amen? Pay attention. I'm talking to you something which you have to store inside your mind. Incline your ears to my saying means be sensitive to my saying. Understand what I'm saying to you. There's something wise which I'm saying to you. Incline your ears to my saying. Next word. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Wow. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What does your eyes see? What comes in your mind? Right? What's in your mind becomes an image in your eyes. Right? If you see in your mind that God is going to prosper you, that's what you see in your eye. I mean, if you see healthy, being healthy in your mind, you see that image in your eyes. Right? And it says, keep them in the midst of your heart, not on the left side or the right side. Keep them in the center. It means, let the word of God rule you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the word of God guide you. Let the word of God be the lamp to your feet and light to your path. That's what it says. Word. Hey, don't be afraid, man. You're Christians. You should not be afraid of all this corona, girona, unemployment, economic. That is for the people of the world. Our standard is different, man. Our standard is different. We work on a different principles. Hallelujah. We should not be afraid of the people in the office. Let them plot. Let them dig. They will fall in their own well. Amen. Hallelujah. Thousands may come on my left. Ten thousands on my right. But they shall not come near me. Let them plot. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let there be an economic you know, crisis. Your job is safe. Amen? Your job is safe. You know why? God has planted you there. Nobody can pluck you out from that place. Understand? Hallelujah. There is an epidemic. Don't be afraid of it. The blood of Jesus is on you. Hallelujah. You don't fear the epidemic. You know why? The word of God is hidden in the midst of your heart. What controls you is the word of God. What controls your emotion is the word of God. What controls your action is the word of God. What controls your thought is the word of God. What controls your deeds is the word of God. You refuse to be afraid. You refuse to fear. You refuse to be in depression. You refuse to be in anxiety. You refuse. No. You refuse to be a failure. No. No. Because the scripture doesn't talk about failure. The scripture doesn't talk about fear. The scripture doesn't talk about depression. The scripture doesn't talk about anxiety. Then why should I? Fear, anxiety, depression, doubt is of this world. But hope, joy, prosperity, peace, happiness is of the scripture. And I am controlled by the scripture. Because scripture has taken the custodian of my mind. I have rented the space in my mind for the scripture. And it is the scripture which is operating in me. Hallelujah. 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 Why Christians are afraid? Because they don't have the scriptures inside them. They are not controlled by the scriptures. Why Christians live in a life of depression? Because it's not the scriptures which is controlling them. It's the world which is controlling them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, let the scripture be in the midst of your heart. Means center. Center of your life is the scripture. And everything else revolves around the scripture. Hallelujah. Everything else revolves around the scripture. And the scripture controls everything that revolves around you. Amen? 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 I want to tell you something. The scriptures have the power to transform your mind. Okay? Or I would say, renew your mind. Right? It renews your mind from negative to positive. And once your mind is renewed from negative to positive, everything what you intake negative is renewed into your mind as positive. I'll say once again. I'll say once again. When you have a renewed mind, everything what you intake negative is renewed positive. So when people speak to you negative, it is renewed into positive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't take their words to be negative. You take their words to be positive. Hello. Hello. Because everything around you is positive. Even though they meant it for bad, it turns to be good for you. Why? You have the power to renew it. You understand? You have the power in your mind to renew it. So when there is a, when there is a family member or your friend or a colleague who comes to you and speaks to you negative, you will not allow that negative to influence your emotion. You take that negative and transform it into positive. Hallelujah. Either you neglect it or you take it to be positive. You will not take that negativeness and influence your emotions to control it. Somebody else's word should not control your emotion. It's the word of God which has to control your emotions. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Somebody else's thought should not control your thoughts. It's the word of God which has to control your thoughts. We get carried away by the words of people, by the thoughts of people. And we get into emotion, depression, anxiety, fear, confusion. Why are you carried away by the thoughts of people? You need to be carried away by the thoughts of God. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the devil has got cells through which he operates. And he operates through your mind. Through your mind. He brings people, situation and circumstance to pull you down. Suddenly things will change. Suddenly, in a day, in a second, things will change. Why? Because you gave space to the devil to work in your mind. He brings situations, he brings circumstances, he brings people and they talk negative. They influence negative. If you get influenced by their words and situation and circumstance, then, then the devil will take control of you and lead you to an unnecessary place where he will put you in a place of confusion, depression, fear, anxiety. Don't give the chance to the devil. Don't give the chance to the devil. See, he knows how to work. It can be your family member. It can be your own husband and wife. Sometimes it can be your own pastor. He speaks to you about something. The devil can come immediately and sow a seed of negativeness in your mind. Saying, pastor meant it for bad because he didn't like you. Or the brother spoke it for bad. Or the sister spoke it for bad. He spoke or she spoke in this intention. Now what happens? You allow the seed to germinate in your mind. Huh? And it grows. And what is the fruit which comes out? Hallelujah. The fruit of flesh. Amen. The devil will use situation and circumstance to sow a seed in your mind. If you don't have the word of God in your mind, then the devil will use that empty place to sow his seed. That's why it is very important to fill your mind with the scriptures. Fill your mind with scriptures. Because for every situation, circumstance, challenge, issues of life you face in this world, there is a scripture. There is a scripture which addresses it. Hello? Hello? There is a scripture which addresses it. There is nothing in the world you go through which doesn't counter it through the scriptures. So it's very important for you to meditate on the word of God. Pay attention to it. Know what it says. Because every issue in life you go through, every day, there is a scripture you need. A scripture to counter it. To counter the attack of the enemy. Hello? Hello? And when you counter the attack of the enemy through the scriptures, that's when you have the victory. Mm -hmm. How did Jesus defeat the devil? Through the scriptures. Yes or no? It says, it says, it says in Deuteronomy, it says, don't test your God. It says, man shall not live by bread alone. It says to worship God Almighty alone. It says, it says, you need to know the scriptures, what it says about your situation, about the challenges, about the issues of life. You need to know. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. When you know what the scripture says, that's when you counter it by saying, it says. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you are in sickness, it says that I am the healer. When you lack something, it says that I am the provider. Hallelujah. When you are in fear, it says that I am the protector. You need to know what the scripture says. And when you know what the scripture says, that's when your life on this earth will be awesome. Uh-huh. I think the red light is on. Hallelujah. Are you there? Are you there with me? That's why you need to read the scriptures every day. That's why Jesus said, you shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out from my father's mouth. So you need the scriptures to live. Otherwise, the devil is going to take an, take an upper place. He's going to use that opportunity to deceive you, to pull you down, to destroy you. 
That's why the Bible says, my people are deceived because of the lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what? Of the scriptures. Of the scriptures. I have the remedy for everything they need in the scriptures. They don't know the remedy. That's why they're not able to apply it. They have not found the vaccine for corona. That's why the disease exists. Right? But they have found the vaccine for malaria. That's why the disease doesn't exist. Yeah? Yes or no? When you find a remedy, then you can destroy the source. So you have the remedy in the scriptures. So you need to read the scriptures, meditate on it, and fill your mind with the scriptures. So scriptures will take control of you. Hallelujah. It will take control of your lifestyle. It will take control of your thoughts. Your thoughts will be more holy. Your thoughts will be more positive. Because you are controlled by the scriptures. You are controlled by the promises of God. So you are not afraid about the world or the things of this world. Because you are superior than that. You are influenced by the superior power. A supreme power. Amen. And the Bible says the word of God has got life. Life. It imparts life into you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you, when you rely on the word, it's then, then you bear the fruit of the spirit. Amen. What does the word 22 say? I'm closing this. What does the word 22 say? Look at this. 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. What is life? What is it life? Come on people, what is life? Word of God. Word of God. Look at this. They are the life huh? to those who find them. They are the life. What is the life? Scripture. Scripture. Is the life Amen. And also the health to their flesh. I want to read one more. Psalms. Psalms chapter 1. Let's close this. Two. Words two. Psalm 1 verse 2. Look at this. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He meditates on his word day and night. Amen. Okay? He meditates on the word day and night. Okay? What is the result of it? Next word. He shall be like a tree planted. He shall be like a tree. Look at this. Planted by the rivers of water. Aha. Uh -huh. Who? The one who meditates on the word of, day, of God day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. When a tree is planted by the rivers, will it dry up? Will it dry up? It says, when you are planted... Beside the word of God. Amen. There is no dryness in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You cannot be dry. You cannot be empty. You cannot be barren. Simple. It says they are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in all season. Sorry, in its season. Amen. It brings forth fruit in its season. Then those Whose leaves, leaves also, also shall, shall not wither. wither. And look at the last word. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. So do you have failure? No. The one who meditates on the word of God day and night. The one who gives the custodian of his mind to the scriptures. Everything he does, he prospers. Amen. The next word. The ungodly okay. are not so. Okay, forget it. That's enough. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what, what is the tool to renew your mind? What is the, the tool for renewing God. your word of mind? Oh, sorry, your, 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 your mind. The word of God, right? Without the word of God, can you renew your mind? So what should you do? You need to meditate on the word of God every day. You should rent the space in your mind to whom? To the scriptures. Right? And you need to allow the scriptures to take control of your lifestyle, yourself. 
not the world to take control, but the scriptures to take control. And when the scriptures take control, there will be no dryness, and you will bear fruit in its season, right? And also, whatever you dull shall, whatsoever, whatever you do shall prosper. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands.